Hall of Famer, Turner Sports NBA analyst Reggie Miller on the call for the Rockets and the Jazz. That'll be Thursday night at 1030 Eastern alongside Kevin Harlan on TNT. Reg joins us now. Hey, Reg, how are you? Good morning. Now, did the Urban Meyer uh, retirement, I'm sure that caught a lot of people off guard. That came from out of left field. But are we... Are we really surprised? I I think uh, the suspension at the beginning of the year um, could have been um, somewhat the writing on the wall. Um, His involvement or lack of involvement on what he knew um, that was going on in his program. I think a lot of that probably helped kind of push him out the door. Uh, I'm sure people behind closed doors are going to say this is probably a forced, pushed retirement. Really? Um, I ho- I hope not. Um, I think he's deserved and earned the right to retire. Um, but we do know he's a he's a family man, and he's had somewhat of health problems. Yeah, uh, is that what the first retirement was somewhat about? Um, so maybe something came back. I hope that's the case. Um, but I think it caught it caught a lot of people off guard this morning. Uh, I think what caught me off guard is I just spilled uh, my water all over the desk here, Reg. So I apologize. I, I, could I? Can you get uh, Seaton? Could you bring me over a paper towel? <laughs> Hold on, Reg. It's, it's live. Well, you know what? You, you never really did have the best of hands <laughs> oh, wow. at Seaton, so uh, I, I'm not surprised at that. You know, I've seen a few clips of you coming off screen yeah, and yep. uh, Butterfingers was kind of the catchphrase people started to use wow. a little bit, but wow. no, I'm only playing. Wow. I'm only playing. My you nickname know. was Golden Boy, Reg, not Butterfingers. Is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah, it was Golden Boy. Uh-huh. Right. But it was a negative. Right. It was a negative. My uh, college coach would call me Golden Boy. He never called me by my name. He called me Golden Boy. And uh, it, it was not meant in a positive way. Well, what made it so negative then? Are you going to explain why the Golden Boy uh, nickname is is not so nice for you? I think he was mocking me that maybe I thought I was better than what I was and I was like the golden child, the golden boy. And <laughs> like, imagine your coach doesn't call you by your name ever. He never called me by my name. And he didn't let me play either. In fact, when I went in to say that I was transferring, he was at his desk. He didn't turn around. He just said, okay. And I went, okay. So then my, my dad goes, are you sure you want to transfer? I go, yeah. He goes, well, what's coach think? I go, I didn't even turn around when I said I was going to transfer. <laughs> so that'll give you an idea of just uh, what he thought of my, my career. Uh, uh, okay. I want to, I want to track down this coach. Can you please give us the name? Come on, Theodore. His name was you. Bob Mulkey. I don't even know if he's still alive. I may have sent him to an early right. grave. But uh, Come on, Coach Mulkey. Yeah, he. I don't even know if he remembers me, other than he called me Golden Boy. By golly, Golden Boy, get out! And he would, you know, <laughs> he would put me on the bench. Yeah, not good, not good. All right, uh, a couple of things here. I mentioned Trey Young that we keep trying to put him in, shoehorn him in here as the next Steph Curry. And then they played last night, and Steph Curry goes, "Can we stop this?" Can we stop? Let him have his own identity. He's not me. It's not fair to compare him to me. So what advice would you give Trey Young? Because the numbers with Trey Young in Atlanta are not good at all, Reg. His shooting percentage and really his court awareness is is suspect when it comes to shooting. He's just he's he can be a great shooter, but he's not taking great shots. Correct. And he's has shown flashes at times. He, He has had some solid games. But if you look at the total body of work, um, I wouldn't say it's been a disappointment. I think uh, it's more so growth. Let's, for, let's not forget now a rookie uh, after his freshman year at Oklahoma. So he's 1920. Um, and he's, he, he is smaller than what Steph was his rookie year. Um, so I think there's a lot of room for him to grow. Well, um, plus number you, one, you had Steph being a couple of years older than him too when he got into the league. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, Steph stayed three years at Davidson, and this kid, even though um, played fantastic uh, for the Sooners a season ago, um, he still is a freshman. So um, it's a, a boy playing amongst men, and I think that's showing. Um, but I agree with Steph. 
Um, that would be like me comparing people comparing myself to Jordan's game. No, you can't do that. You're talking about a, a two-time MVP and a, a generational type player in Steph Curry. And people like to make the comparisons because they're of similar size, not the same size. They both have unlimited range, though Steph is a little bit more accurate. Um, so, of course, people are always saying, who's the next Jordan? Who's the next one? Look, they're going to be comparing Zion Williams to LeBron James. They're doing that now. He's the next LeBron James. No, he's not. Um, there's one LeBron James. There's one Steph Curry. There's one Zion Williams. And obviously, there's one Trey Young. If I'm Trey, um, I need to work on my decision making. I mean, his decision making is, is for the point guard position is terrible. Um, that's the one thing. His shooting will come. He, yeah. he puts too much time in the lab. I'm not worried about his shooting. To me, his decision making has to get much better, Theodore. Kobe Bryant says the Lakers will be champs sooner. Uh, and then uh, laughing at uh, Warriors fans. So sooner than later, what do you think Kobe means by that? I mean, we're adding a little more pressure there to LeBron, but what's, what's – Co- <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. I don't know about the backhanded, like, uh, zing at LeBron. I don't, I'm not quite sure about sooner than later. I could be wrong. A lot of pieces need to happen first for Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson for that to happen. Um, but if this – Golden State team, if everyone re-signs, if KD comes back, Clay, and they find a way to get you know Draymond on the same page with everyone, I, I see this run continuing. So I, sooner than later, define sooner, uh, Kobayashi. Um, but I think this is the Lakers' mystique talking versus the reality speaking. I thought it was interesting, though. I, you know, I think that – Everybody, he's he's rooting for the Lakers to do well because he's probably rooting for Genie Bus, you know, to to do well taking over that team. But I I wonder if he really feels like sooner they're they're going to be champs sooner than later. And what does sooner mean with uh, LeBron James? Is this a two well, years? You, you roll up, you roll up your fan base, which is good. Um, <laughs> they have been playing well as of late, but sooner or later, to me, sooner is. Like you said, within two years. They're not winning a championship within two years unless Kawhi comes, unless KD comes next year. Then I could possibly see that. Two to three years, I don't see a championship. So maybe later than sooner, five years down the road. But LeBron will be nearing 40 then. Um, So I don't see it then. Um, Look, it's a move to rile the fan base. Um The Warriors have dominated the league over the last five to six years. The buzz is for Golden State. They're the sexy team. They created – they changed the rules in the landscape of playing small. Every team now has to have a Draymond Green that can switch and play uh, point guards and shooting guards. So they have that death lineup with Andre Iguodala, and they go small, and everyone has adjusted to that. So, in a sense, they're outliers because they stand out and they do – these things and you know they're they're the team and i think kobe is trying to rein it back and rile up the fan base and Mm. get people back on the lakers bandwagon talking to reggie miller reg has the rockets and the jazz coming up thursday night 10 30 eastern on tnt along with kevin harlan uh how many head coaches did you have in the nba wow um 10 plus dr jack ramsey obviously larry bird rick Carlisle, larry brown George Irvine, Mel Daniels for a weekend, <laughs> um, Dick Versace. Um, How much say did you have later in your career? The reason why I bring this up is Aaron Rodgers at 35. They're going to bring in a new head coach, and he says he's not there. The Packers say he's not involved in this uh, process here. Were you consulted at any point in your career? Zero. Absolutely zero. And especially during my heyday, my first eight years, you would think I would have been. Donnie Walsh told me nothing. He, would give, he wouldn't give me a heads up on anything, on player personnel, on uh, coach hirings, nothing. Didn't tell me anything. I just didn't make the team better. You know, we need some veterans. We need some shooters. But did you want to be I involved say, hey. if given the opportunity? I mean, it would have been nice, but I trusted Donnie. 
Um, and that's the kind of relationship you've got to have with your front office. I hope Aaron Rodgers trusts his front office. I hope he trusts the president or GM to make the right decision. Um, but no, I had zero idea of when they were going to, you know, you would hear buzz that, you know, Larry Legends getting ready to be your coach or Isaiah, you know, Isaiah was another coach of ours. Um, you would hear things that I wouldn't call Donnie up and say, don't do this or hire this person. Um, nor did he ever, ever call me and ask me my opinion. Wait, Isaiah was a coach. Isaiah was uh, my coach for two or three years in Indiana. Yeah. I had some great Hall of Fame coaches, if you think about it. Dr. Jack Ramsey, Hall of Fame, Larry Brown, Hall of Fame, Larry Bird, Hall of Fame, Rick Carlisle will be Hall of Fame, Isaiah Thomas, Hall of Fame. Not bad. Yeah. Well, we just don't think of Isaiah Thomas as a uh, great coach. Um, He was good for us. We had it, it was the transition. He came in after we went to the finals. versus the Lakers. So he was from 2001 to 2003. And we had just uh, traded for Jermaine O'Neal. We got Al Harrington. We had Jonathan Bender, Jamal Tinsley. We had traded for Ron Artest and Brad Miller, I believe his second season. So Carlisle benefited from all that because he came in after Isaiah. But Isaiah Isaiah had us pretty locked. We were a young team. We should have beaten... Uh, if you remember, that was the series. Jason Kidd and New Jersey Nets were the number one seed. We were the number eight seed. Back then, it was the best of five series, double overtime. Game, uh, yeah, game five in New Jersey. We should have beat them to move on. An eight beating a one. We blew it. That was my last dunk ever, if you remember, going down the lane. <laughs> that was my last dunk. In Two-hander. Two-hander, right? Two-hander. Yeah. Down the middle. Got fouled. Come on, Joey Crawford. Call the foul. <laughs> Let me hit the free throw, and we upset him. Come on, uh, man. I know. No. I know. Yeah. So, <laughs> Isaiah was part of that uh, uptick of – I know uh, Rick Carlisle benefited from that, but Isaiah, he was a good coach. Top three in three-pointers made rookie year. Ray Allen made 39%. You made 35%. Uh, Steph Curry made 43%. In your career, you were 39.5%. I'll round it up to 40. Ray Allen, 40. Steph is at 43. Kyle Korver at 43. So those are the top five in three-point percentages. Rookie year. And then career uh, three point percentages. So I don't know if you cared about that or not. Hey, by the way, I got a new uh, favorite player. Uh oh. What? Who? No, no, you're not going to guess this. I, I can just... I can give you fifty guesses. You're not going to guess him. But he is shooting fifty um, fifty from east the east or west, east or west, west, east or west. And he's shooting fifty okay. percent from the floor, forty percent from three point range, and he's averaging over twenty points a game. I would say uh, Nikola Jokic. No, but I do like him. He's fun. Okay. All right. I'm on the right page here. Uh, and he's averaging over 20. Uh, CJ McCollum? No, I like him too. This, this is a guy who's okay. under the radar. Under the radar, shooting 52%, shooting 42 from three point range, and averaging over 20. In the Western Conference, I would go with... Uh, Surprise team this year. So, Memphis, or it's going to be... Uh, no one on the Clippers, so it's averaging 20 with those numbers. Surprise team. He's on the Clippers. Ooh. He's on the Clippers. Well, it can't be Sweet Lou. Tobias uh, Harris. Not- very good. <laughs> Very good. Yes, you're right. He is averaging over 20. Yeah, he's averaging. Yes, that's tw- a good call. Yeah, 21. 21. And is in line for a huge payday this summer. Yes, he is. I mean, he could strike gold. Uh, and it's a, I, the Clippers are for real because I just did the game last week. And remember, we're leading up. It was like, who's the best team in L.A.? Yeah. Lakers, Clippers. Yeah. I'm like LeBron James and tell someone, you know, yada, yada. The Clippers are for real. They are for, they can, now could they win the West? No, but 
I, if healthy, and they play this same way. Will they make the playoffs? Play 11, guys. Will the Clippers oh, make Oh, yeah, the... they're making the playoffs. Oh, yeah, they're making the playoffs. The okay. question is, will they be top four? Yeah, they're making the playoffs. If that's the case, Doc Rivers is your coach of the year. Coach of the year. If they, if he finishes in the top four, coach of the year. Yeah. Uh, Reg, coach of the year. Reg will be on the call with uh, Kevin Harlan. It'll be uh, Thursday night. It'll be the Rockets and the Utah Jazz. Great to uh, check in with you again, Reg, and uh, have fun on Thursday night. The Golden Boy, <laughs> Theodore. I truly appreciate this. <laughs> My Danettes, I love you. I will see and talk to you guys soon. Thank you, Reg. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.